Good afternoon. This is All India Radio. I am Valsa Williams and with me is Anuja Kumar with the Midday News. The headlines. Rajya Sabha passes insolvency and bankruptcy code second amendment bill 2020 bill temporarily suspends initiation of corporate insolvency resolution process under the code. President Ramnath Kovind says new education policy will restore India's glory as a great center of learning globally. NIA arrests nine al-Qaeda terrorists from West Bengal and Kerala group was planning to attack vital installations in the country. Jammu and Kashmir Lieutenant Governor announces 1350 crore rupee relief package for the traders of the union territory. Highest single day COVID-19 recovery of over 95,000 registered in the country recovery rate improves to 79.28% and in cricket 13th edition of IPL begins today with first match being played at Abu Dhabi The Rajya Sabha today passed the Insolvency and Bankruptcy Code IBC Second Amendment Bill 2020. It amends the Insolvency and Bankruptcy Code 2016, which provides a time-bound process for resolving insolvency in companies and among individuals. Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman moved the bill. Insolvency is a situation where individuals or companies are unable to repay their outstanding debt. The bill seeks to temporarily suspend initiation of corporate insolvency resolution process CIRP under the code. It replaces the Insolvency and Bankruptcy Code Amendment Ordinance 2020 promulgated in June this year. The bill provides that for defaults arising during the 6 months from the 25th of March this year, CIRP can never be initiated by either the company or its creditors. The central government may extend this period to one year through notification replying to the discussion finance minister nirmala sitaraman said that insolvency and bankruptcy is a significant part of business and it is helping the companies and people to resolve the issues without going to nclt she said amendments were brought due to the covid-19 situation to give immunity to business from insolvency proceedings in this critical situation ibc is such a critical part of business now It is important for us to understand from various different angles how IBC has performed but one concrete example is I want to quote on the NPAs of scheduled commercial banks which have been recovered through various channels IBC is actually serving the purpose of making sure resolutions are offered although it's a insolvency and bankruptcy code it ensures that most of the resolutions are happening to make the company as a going concern only rather than liquidated giving the comparative analysis of the recovery made by the lok adalat sarfezi and ibc in 2018-19 she informed ibc has ensured 42.5% of recovery in the sense amount recovered is 70819 as opposed to 166600 as amount involved which came to the ibc and this pertains to only 2018-19 which are provisional figures on the employment front she said 258 companies were rescued under the ibc mechanism initiating the discussion vivek tanka of the congress questioned several provisions of the bill urging that these must be reviewed for the interest of the public he said some of the provisions will benefit big companies and prove to be detrimental for small companies including msmes FDI inflows of 2883 crore rupees have been reported in defense and aerospace sector through automatic route till June this year this was stated by the minister of state for defense shri pad nayak in a written reply in the rajya sabha today he said FDI inflows of 1849 crore rupees have been reported in defense and aerospace sectors after 2014 through automatic route Replying to another question Mr Naik informed the defense ministry has signed a contract for modernization of airfield infrastructure phase 2 on the 8th of May this year Rajya Sabha chairman M Venkaiah Naidu has held a meeting with the Union Home Secretary Joint Secretary of Health and Family Welfare and DG 
ICMR today on measures to ensure the health security of MPs during the pandemic. Vice President informed the House that the officials have stressed on the need to wear a mask, adopt the practice of safe distancing, healthy lifestyle and hygiene to curb the spread of COVID-19. The chairman said these measures are important to contain the pandemic and urged the members to keep six feet distance and other measures in mind while attending the ongoing monsoon session. He also informed that antigen and RT-PCR tests are available in the parliament premises for the members of the parliament. The chairman also asked them to avoid meeting with them and try to write to him as much as possible about their issues. Earlier, the House paid obituary reference to the passing away of former member Nazneen Farooq and observed a two-minute silence. The Rajya Sabha today passed the Epidemic Diseases Amendment Bill 2020. The bill amends the Epidemic Diseases Act 1897 to include protection for healthcare service personnel combating epidemic diseases and expands the powers of the central government to prevent the spread of such diseases. The bill repeals the Epidemic Diseases Amendment Ordinance that was promulgated in April this year. The legislation makes harm, injury, hurt or danger to the life of healthcare service personnel. As a cognizable and non-bailable offence, it has provisions of imprisonment from three months to five years and a fine between 50,000 rupees to 2 lakh rupees. Speaking on the bill, Health and Family Welfare Minister Dr. Harshwardhan said the ordinance was brought in view of the attack on the health care workers and the country felt the need to bring strict legislation to check such incidents in the COVID-19 pandemic situation. He informed that the government is working on the National Public Health Act and 14 states have sent their suggestions in this regard. The House also negated the resolution moved by Binoy Vishwam of CPI and KC Venugopal of Congress demanding disapproval of the ordinance related to the bill. Earlier, initiating the discussion, Neeraj Dangi of the Congress questioned the government, alleging that unplanned lockdown has adversely affected the country's economy, employment and lives of migrant workers. He also accused the government of delaying in response against the COVID pandemic. Another party leader, Anand Sharma, said the states must be included in the major consultative process while framing the rules. Rajya Sabha has been adjourned for the day. The country today registered the highest single-day recoveries of 95,880 COVID patients. Health Ministry said the recovery rate of COVID-19 has further improved to 79.28%. The total number of recoveries has reached over 42 lakh. Of the new recovered cases, about 60% are being reported from five states, Maharashtra, Tamil Nadu, Andhra Pradesh, Karnataka and Uttar Pradesh. The ministry said India has overtaken USA and become the number one in terms of global COVID-19 recoveries. The constantly increasing recoveries have ensured that the actual caseload of the country is reduced and currently comprises only 19.10% of the total positive cases. Presently, the total number of active cases in the country is 10 lakh 13,000. In the last 24 hours, 1,247 deaths were reported, taking the toll to 85,619. India's COVID-19 tally has crossed 53 lakh, with 93,337 new infections being reported in a day. The top five states with the maximum case load are Maharashtra, Tamil Nadu, Andhra Pradesh, Karnataka and Uttar Pradesh. According to the Indian Council of Medical Research, more than 8,81,000 tests were conducted during the last 24 hours. The total number of samples tested so far has gone up to over 6 crore 24 lakhs. Telangana reported 2,123 fresh COVID-19 cases during the last 24 hours, taking the number of cases reported so far in the state to 1,69,169. The state conducted over 54,000 tests yesterday. The recovery rate also slightly improved to 81.28%, with 2,151 more people recovering yesterday. This took the number of recovered people so far in the state to 1,37,508.
In Maharashtra, a two-day Janta curfew called by the Civic Administration of Nagpur received a mixed response with many shops closed and scanty traffic on the roads. In view of the rising number of coronavirus cases in the city, Nagpur Mayor Sandeep Joshi called people to take part in the two-day Janta curfew which started today. The curfew has been receiving mixed response from the people. The curfew will continue till Sunday night. The mayor has urged citizens to follow Janata curfew every Saturday and Sunday of the month to contain the spread of coronavirus. Though no official communique has been issued in this regard, this is purely a voluntary initiative, said Municipal Commissioner Radha Krishnan. The Gujarat High Court yesterday refused to mediate in the issue of reducing fees of private schools due to the pandemic. State Education Minister Bhupendra Singh Chudasama said that the government will take suitable action after studying the High Court judgment. More from our correspondent. In a judgment pronounced yesterday, the Gujarat High Court told the state government to take an independent decision as it has wide powers. The government had filed an application seeking the court's direction after the Federation of Self-Finance Schools refused to accept the proposal of a 25% cut in the fees. The division bench said that there was no need for the court to function as an arbitrator as the government has substantial powers under the Disaster Management Act and the Epidemic Disease Act. Now the ball is again in the government's court as self-finance schools and parents' associations are sticking to their stand. Yogesh Pandya, Air News, Ahmedabad. The Sikkim government has ordered a complete lockdown in Gangtok municipal area from 21st to 27th of September due to a spike in cases in the city. All passenger and vehicle movement except those involved in essential services will be prohibited. Meanwhile, three cabinet ministers and two BJP MLAs have tested positive for COVID-19. Director General come Secretary of State's Health Department, Dr. Pempa Shering Bhutia, informed this morning that ministers and MLAs were found COVID-19 positive in a test conducted for the upcoming Sikkim Legislative Assembly session on the 21st of September. Agriculture Minister Loknath Sharma, Forest Minister Karma Lode Bhutia, Power Minister M.N. Sherpa, MLA of Meli Farwati Tamang and MLA of Farvung Titi Bhutia have tested positive. President Ram Nath Kovind today said that the national education policy aims to reorient the education system towards meeting the needs of the 21st century. He said the policy will not only strengthen the future of our youth, but also set the country on course in becoming Atmanirbhar Bharat. President Kovind was speaking while inaugurating the Visitors' Conference on Implementation of New Education Policy 2020 Higher Education through Video Conference. This policy has been prepared after extensive participation involving two and a half lakh gram panchayats, more than twelve and a half thousand local bodies and about 675 districts. More than two lakh suggestions have been taken into consideration. Thus, the policy reflects a ground level understanding of the challenges, aspirations and solutions related to education. The national education policy sets the vision of developing an equitable and vibrant knowledge society by providing quality education to all. The President said universities and institutes of higher education should be the centers of innovation. Universities and institutes of higher education should be centers of innovation. They should provide innovative solutions to national and local problems. Community participation and use of local resources should be encouraged for providing solutions to local problems. Higher education institutions should utilize national missions like Swaksh Bharat, Skill India, Make in India and Atmanirbhar Bharat as opportunities to promote solution-oriented learning. The President added, India was a globally respected education hub during the ancient times. Universities at Takshashila and Nalanda had iconic status. Today, India's higher education institutions do not get high positions 
in global rankings. Effective implementation of the NEP 2020 is likely to restore India's glory as a great center of learning. One of the targets of the NEP 2020 is to increase the gross enrollment ratio or GER in higher education to 50% by 2035. Technology can help in achieving this target. Speaking on the occasion, Education Minister Ramesh Pokhriyal Nishank said the new education policy will promote research and innovation in the country. नई शिक्षा नीति 2020 कौशल प्रशिक्षण तथा संरचनात्मक कार्यात्मक सुधारों व गुणवत्ता शिक्षा के सार्वभौमिक पहुंच प्रदान कर भारत की निरंतर प्रगति समृद्धि सामाजिक न्याय समता वैज्ञानिक उन्नति राष्ट्रीय एकीकरण और सांस्कृतिक संरक्षण का मार्ग प्रशस्त कर विश्व मंच का नेतृत्व करेगी you are listening to the midday news on all india radio a reminder of the headlines before we move on Rajya Sabha passes Insolvency and Bankruptcy Code Second Amendment Bill 2020. Bill temporarily suspends initiation of corporate insolvency resolution process under the Code. President Ramnath Kovind says new education policy will restore India's glory as a great center of learning globally. NIA arrests nine Al-Qaeda terrorists from West Bengal and Kerala. Group was planning to attack vital installations in the country. Jammu and Kashmir Lieutenant Governor announces 1,350 crore rupee relief package for the traders of the Union Territory. Highest single-day COVID-19 recovery of over 95,000 registered in the country. Recovery rate improves to 79.28%. And in cricket, 13th edition of IPL begins today with first match being played at Abu Dhabi. For quick news updates round the clock, follow us on Twitter handle at the rate AIR News Alerts. All India Radio presents World News. News and views from across the globe. What happened? What is up next? The newsmakers and the highlights of the day. Every day at 10.20 p.m. in the night. On 100.1 FM, All India Radio. The National Investigation Agency, NIA, has arrested nine Al-Qaeda terrorists from West Bengal and Kerala. The agency today conducted simultaneous raids at several locations in Ernakulam in Kerala and Murshidabad in West Bengal and arrested these terrorists associated with Pakistan-sponsored module of Al-Qaeda. Six terrorists were arrested from West Bengal and three from Kerala. In a statement, NIA said the group was planning to undertake terrorist attacks at vital installations in India with an aim to kill innocent people and strike terror in their hearts. The agency said a large quantity of incriminating material, including digital devices, documents, jihadi literature, sharp weapons, country-made firearms and literature used for making homemade explosive devices have been seized from their possession. As per preliminary investigation, these individuals were radicalized by Pakistan-based Al-Qaeda terrorists on social media and were motivated to undertake attacks at multiple places including the national capital region. The module was actively indulging in fundraising and a few members of the gang were planning to travel to New Delhi to procure arms and ammunition. These arrests have preempted possible terrorist attacks in various parts of the country. Security forces today arrested three people believed to be terrorists and recovered a huge cache of arms and ammunition from their possession in Rajori district. Our Jammu correspondent reports that an operation was launched in Gurdanbala area on the outskirts of Rajori town on the intervening night of September 18th and 19th, after which forces successfully nabbed three suspects who are all from the Kashmir Valley. Huge quantity of arms and ammunition, one lakh cash and some incriminating material have also been recovered from their possession. Rajori police have registered an FIR and are investigating further. Jammu and Kashmir Lieutenant Governor Manoj Sinha today announced an economic package of 1,350 crore rupees for the Union Territory in a bid to boost the business and the other ailing sectors who suffered huge losses for several years. He was addressing a press conference in Srinagar today. Arthik Samasya, Jhel Rahe Business Community, Ke Logon Ke Liye, Ek Tera So Pachas Karo Rupai Ka Economic Package, Hum Sab Ne Mil Kar Ke Manjur Kiya Hai. Ye Aatma Nirbhar Bharat Abhiyan, Manani Pradhan Mantri Ji Ne Ushit Kiya Tha. 
उसके अलावा है इसके साथ साथ कई बड़े प्रशासनिक मेजर्स भी हमने लिए हैं जिससे आवाम को बिजनेसमैन को इंडस्ट्री वालों को टूरिज्म में लगे हुए लोगों को सभी स्टेक होल्डर्स को बड़ा लाभ आने वाले दिनों में मिलने वाला है He said that it has been decided to give 5% interest subvention to every borrower from the business community without any conditions for 6 months in the current financial year. He added this will be a huge relief and help in generating employment. Under the credit card scheme, LG Sinha said that the government has decided to extend maximum limit of 1 lakh rupees to 2 lakh rupees for people working in handloom and handicraft industry. He further informed that 50% discount will be given for a year in electricity and water bills. Stamp duty has been exempted up to March 2021 for all the borrowers. In Ladakh, the Union Territory Administration has issued a notification for the 6th General Council elections for Ladakh Autonomous Hill Development Council Lay. Under the directions from the Lieutenant Governor R.K. Mathur, Ladakh Election Department Secretary Saugat Biswas issued the notification yesterday. The polls will be held on the 16th of October. More from our correspondent. After becoming the capital of Union Territory Ladakh, Leh will be having a major election in October. As per the notification, nominations for the 6th General Council will begin from 21st September. On 29th September, the nominations will be scrutinized. On 1st October, withdrawals of the nominations will be allowed. If necessary, the polling will take place on 16th October and counting of votes on 22nd October. The process of General Council elections will be completed by 27th October. The tenure of present Council expires on 2nd November. In the meantime, Leh Election Officer Sachin Kumar Vaishya has issued Model Code of Conduct for Leh Hill Council election in the district. From Friday, the Code of Conduct came into force. Ramesh Chandra, Alinde Radio News, Leh. Virat, the decommissioned aircraft carrier of the Indian Navy, will begin its last journey tomorrow from Mumbai's naval dockyard to Alang in Gujarat, where it will be dismantled. The vessel had served the Indian Navy for 30 years before being decommissioned in 2017. There were attempts to convert Virat into a museum or a restaurant, but none of the plans materialized. The aircraft carrier will be towed by the high-capacity tugs owned by Sriram Group, the company that has won the bid to dismantle the ship. The journey will be completed in two days. India and Bangladesh have agreed to resume joint coordinated border patrolling to reduce criminal activities like smuggling of cattle, weapons and narcotics on the border. The decision was taken during the 50th DG level conference of the border guarding forces of India and Bangladesh, which concluded in Dhaka today. A joint record of discussion was issued on the final day of the conference, recognizing the increasingly violent attacks on the border guarding forces, both the countries have agreed for real-time sharing of intelligence on smuggling syndicates and list of smugglers to ensure the India-Bangladesh border remains peaceful and secure. Both the countries have agreed to take effective steps for the prevention of human trafficking and illegal crossing of the international border. Bangladesh reassured India that it will not allow any Indian insurgent groups to use its soil for anti-India activities. India and Bangladesh also have agreed not to undertake any development work within 150 yards of IB without prior information. It was agreed that the next round of the DG level conference will be held at Guwahati, preferably within the second week of November. The four-day conference of the border guarding forces of India and Bangladesh was convened in Dhaka between September the 16th to 19th to discuss issues related to India-Bangladesh border management and security. The six-member BSF delegation was led by its DG Rakesh Asthana. The Bangladesh side was led by the DG BGB Muhammad Shafinul Islam. Prime Minister Narendra Modi will address the high-level meeting to mark the 75th anniversary of the United Nations and the general debate next week. The annual session of the UN General Assembly begins in New York on September the 21st with a high-level meeting to commemorate the 75th anniversary of the United Nations. To mark the historic occasion, the 193 UN member states will adopt a forward-looking political declaration negotiated through an intergovernmental process on the theme of the future we want, the United Nations we need, reaffirming our collective commitment to multilateralism. 
Prime Minister Modi will address this special event through a pre-recorded video statement. The general debate will commence on September the 22nd and will continue till September 29th. PM Modi will also deliver the national statement on September the 26th through a pre-recorded video statement. The vision Prime Minister Modi outlines at these two high-level meetings will be closely watched as it comes ahead of India taking a seat at the powerful UN Security Council as an elected non-permanent member for a two-year term beginning January 1, 2021. Last year, Prime Minister Modi had travelled to New York to attend a high-level annual General Assembly session after addressing a mega-diaspora event, Howdy Modi, held on September the 22nd. This year, for the first time in the UN's 75-year history, heads of the state and government will not be arriving in New York for the General Assembly due to the ongoing pandemic. They have submitted pre-recorded video statements that will be played in the iconic General Assembly Hall. United States has banned the download of Chinese app TikTok and use of messaging and payment platform WeChat, saying they threaten national security. The ban will come into effect from tomorrow night. In a statement, Commerce Secretary Wilbur Ross said, Chinese Communist Party has demonstrated the means and motives to use these apps to threaten the national security, foreign policy and the economy of the U.S. The initiative will ban WeChat and TikTok from the online marketplaces operated by Apple and Google. While WeChat will effectively be shut down in the U.S. from tomorrow night, existing TikTok users will be able to continue using the app until November 12th, when it will also face a full ban on its U.S. operations. Commerce Secretary Ross said, From tomorrow night, TikTok users will not have access to improved apps, updated apps, upgraded apps or maintenance. TikTok has slammed the decision and vowed to fight the Trump administration's ongoing crackdown on the company. It said the ban impedes a tool for entertainment, self-expression and connection. On to sports now. After a long wait, cricket stars will be in action at the 13th edition of Indian Premier League at Abu Dhabi in the United Arab Emirates today. The fans will have a lot to cheer as Rohit Sharma-led Mumbai Indians will take on Mahindra Singh Dhoni-led Chennai Super Kings in the opening match of the IPL. The tournament, which has been shifted to the UAE due to the COVID-19 pandemic, is a TV-only event. In all, 60 matches will be held in three venues, Abu Dhabi, Sharjah and Dubai. All the participating teams have arrived in the UAE to fight it out at a neutral venue away from their home conditions. The organizers have ensured adequate safety arrangements are in place, creating bio-bubbles. The idea is to prevent coronavirus cases. The matches will continue for the next 53 days. India's Rohan Bopanna and Dennis Shapovalov of Canada bowed out of the men's doubles event of the Italian Open Tennis Tournament in Rome. They lost to the French duo of Jeremy Chardy and Fabrice Martin in quarterfinals. The unseeded Indo-Canadian pair fought hard before going down 6-4-5-7-7-10 to the French combination in the tiebreaker yesterday. Top seeds Novak Djokovic and Rafael Nadal advanced to the quarterfinals of the Italian Open with straight set wins yesterday. Djokovic beat his fellow Serb Filip Krajinovic 7-6-6-3 while Nadal won 6-1-6-3 against Dusan Lajovic, also of Serbia. In the women's draw, top seed Simona Halep of Romania beat Ukraine's Diana Yastremska 7-5-6-4. Second seed Karolina Pliskova of the Czech Republic also met little trouble in her 6-4-6-3 win over Russia's Anna Blinkova. Now let us take a look at the weather update for the day. The national capital Delhi will have a partly cloudy sky. The minimum temperature recorded in the city was 28 degrees Celsius and the maximum will be around 38 degrees. Mumbai will see a generally cloudy sky with moderate rain. Chennai is likely to see a generally cloudy sky with light rain or drizzle. Kolkata may have a partly cloudy sky with one or two spells of rain or thunder showers. The minimum temperature was 28 degrees Celsius, while the maximum is likely to be around 35. In the Union Territory of Jammu and Kashmir, the minimum temperature was recorded at 25 degrees Celsius in Jammu, while the maximum will be around 36 degrees. In Srinagar, the temperature will hover between 10 and 29 degrees Celsius. Ladakh will also have mainly clear sky. Temperature may hover between 10 and 26 degrees Celsius. And Muzaffarabad is also likely to have mainly clear sky. 
And now before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. Rajya Sabha passes insolvency and bankruptcy code, Second Amendment Bill 2020. Bill temporarily suspends initiation of corporate insolvency resolution process under the court. President Ramnath Govind says new education policy will restore India's glory as a great center of learning globally. NIA arrests nine Al-Qaeda terrorists from West Bengal and Kerala. Group was planning to attack vital installations in the country. JNK Lieutenant Governor announces 1,350 crore rupee relief package for the traders of the Union Territory. And with that, we end the midday news.